In terms of news, information, and interviews for arguably 2020's biggest release, things have seemed to be pretty quiet as of late since CD Projekt Red released about 14 minutes of new Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay at the end of August. Obviously, I'm sure behind the scenes, CD Projekt Red is racing to the April 2020 finish line, and marketing will likely ramp up as we get closer to release. But right now, CDPR is actually not exactly keeping quiet, because the massive, somewhat secret AR which no one really in games media is at all talking about, has again booted back up with some crazy hints and teases to some narrative elements that will likely play out within Cyberpunk 2077. This ARG is finally progressing to a point where we've received some huge secret character, corporation, and story information that again I have to emphasize nobody is talking about. But today we are going to break down all of these latest findings, and let me say it's quite a bit, so buckle up. But besides just that, additionally there is some other news and details that we are going to discuss, which includes a few gameplay images, including one which may be teasing at an established fan favorite character from Cyberpunk 2020. We're also going to go over a few recent CDPR developer interviews that provides us more background on how they are developing stories and quests within the world of Night City, and also the narrative aim that they have for the multiplayer component, which is coming sometime post-release. Now before we dive into all of this, if you go on to enjoy this content and want to show your support for Cyberpunk 2077 videos like this, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing for more, and turning notifications on so you do not miss out on any new videos. Nonetheless, I just gotta say, it's like a breath of fresh air talking about a game like Cyberpunk 2077. In an industry of so much nonsense that publishers enjoy pulling on consumers, every once in a while it certainly is just great to talk about a highly anticipated game like this with all of you, but first, we are going to proceed to these new gameplay images that have been shared by CD Projekt Red. So the first image here again I believe was featured in the recent gameplay demo, or at least this location of Pacifica was. And what's at the center of this image is obviously the flying vehicles of Network News 54, and I think it would be really fascinating, and hopefully this is what's going to happen, if we saw this news company pop up whenever something occurs in Night City, or something big, or whenever V's creating some chaos. For what it's worth, News 54 is an established news source in Cyberpunk lore, and actually was first teased for Cyberpunk 2077 in that teaser trailer that we got in early 2013. To the next image we have V and I believe again part of the broken down, abandoned slums of Pacifica, but this time V is in his or her vehicle, arriving to some sort of underground hotel, which maybe that is hinting that we can stay at hotels throughout Night City instead of always having to head back to our apartment. What's clear from all of these screenshots shared these last few months is that CD Projekt Red is clearly holding back, not wanting to show the entire world. As far as I understand, they've concentrated their efforts on only showing two of these more run-down districts, which is Pacifica, shown in the latest demo, and Watson, which was shown in last year's demo. Maybe once we do get closer to release, we'll get a look at some of the more successful and rich districts like City Center and Westbrook, but for now it's clear they're holding back, which in all honesty, really isn't at all a bad thing, as I think most of us want this world to be a surprise until you know the game releases and we have the choice or ability to explore the six districts of Night City and also what's outside, above, and below Night City. Now the last image we have is not gameplay but it seems to be artwork and it does seem to tease at a well-known character many believe that individual in the background to be Morgan Blackhand, who may have actually been teased already before in some artwork that I believe was released last year during E3 2018. Blackhand is an established cyberpunk character as I said before, described as a pragmatic solo with an anodized black chrome cyber limb arm. And Mike Pondsmith is very fond of this character, saying when he was creating the character he had George Clooney in mind, and also Morgan Blackhand was Mike Pondsmith's own solo player character in Cyberpunk 2020. To add fuel to this fire, CDPR's quest designer Philip Weber teased on Twitter that this character is one of his favorites and would not obviously answer the obvious speculation that this is Blackhand, but I will say based on the events of the Fourth Corporate War, I do wonder how Black Hand survived and how he is alive in 2077, although it does seem this mysterious character is an old man, so let the speculation run wild. Next, this may actually fit with Black Hand, but an interview that went under the radar gave us some interesting insight. CDPR's senior concept artist, Marth Yonkers, speaking to Video Games Chronicle, revealed that as of late August, they were mostly focused on polishing things, adding detail to areas, and optimizing performance for Cyberpunk 2077. Furthermore, when asked how much of the game we have not seen yet, this developer responded with a bit of a tease. It's a huge game, we've shown two districts now, and there are six in the game. Exploration is very 
very different from The Witcher, which was very flat, because you have all this verticality with the buildings. There's so much to explore in every direction. There's a lot of surprises left. I can't really say a number or anything, but it's going to be huge, that's for sure. What these surprises are, nobody knows, but as I said earlier on, CD Projekt Red is, for good reason, holding back on everything that this game will offer. Now, from the same gaming outlet VGC, we actually got our first idea on what multiplayer may look like. CDPR's level designer Max Pierce said during the Tokyo Game Show that I can't say too much on it because it's still going through its process, but it's about making sure that multiplayer fits in with the lore of the world and it feels right. It's about making sure it fits in with who we are as a company as well, because story is so important important to us. Plus, it needs to fit in with how we design and deliver games. So there have been theories running wild that multiplayer may just be a co-op mode, although a statement like this could mean they're looking to go with a more Red Dead Online-like approach to things with a focus somewhat on narrative in multiplayer, which could be interesting, but really at this point it's too early to say, and honestly I could be completely off on what they are planning. On the CD Projekt Red forums, recently we got more insight into the side content of Cyberpunk 2077, with quest designer Philip Weber revealing that every quest in the game is handcrafted. For us, quality is always more important than quantity, and we just couldn't deliver this quality with modules we assemble in different ways to create these random quests. We just don't want to keep people busy, but actually give them something to do that's worth their while. And this response was given when asked if there would be Radiant quests, which you might remember from games like Fallout 4, which in my opinion were pretty boring and thankfully everything is going to be handcrafted with Cyberpunk 2077, no procedural generation with quests. Beyond just main and side quests, as has been mentioned in the past, we have street stories, which is described as so. They are the bread and butter of a street merc like V, a bit like monster hunting for a witcher like Geralt. These are the jobs that V gets from fixers like Dexter Deshawn, and doing these jobs gives V more street cred so she gets a reputation around the city. Another interesting part of this community interview was if our appearance will impact an NPC's response, which Weber tries to avoid answering because of, you know, spoilers, but he does say that there might be reactions sometimes depending on what kind of NPC we meet, and of course, what their status in society is. To our last piece of news, if you're wondering if you could romance Johnny Silverhand, CD Projekt Red has given an answer, which is no. Which may be disappointing to some who want some Keanu love, but he still plays a critical role throughout the game, with the second most dialogue, so at least you're you're not missing out on Keanu, and he plays a big role in the game. Finally though, we move on to the massive, somewhat not talked about secret ARG, and to quickly summarize the craziness that has come the last few years and last few months since E3 2019, CD Projekt Red has been puzzling fans with a bunch of secret messages and codes hidden within images, trailers, websites, phone numbers, and more, which isn't anything new because these secret messages have been part of the marketing of Cyberpunk 2077, dating back to the teaser trailer in 2013, which included the first mention of The Witcher 3 and it being open world. Following that at E3 2018, not this year's E3 but the year before, a secret IP address was found and it led to a ton of secret codes and websites which eventually led to some lucky fans receiving a care package from CD Projekt Red which included some sort of mysterious t-shirt. Later around Gamescom 2018 and concept art, a link would be shown in the background which would again lead to a whole bunch of secret messages and codes that players would need to solve or decode code, eventually leading to those lucky players receiving another mysterious t-shirt, which when combining the t-shirts, it was found to be a grill cipher, and when decoded was found to say, Monday. This would lead into the 50 minute gameplay demo being first teased through a cryptic stream on Twitch. So yeah, this was clever, elaborate, amazing, very interesting marketing, but this newest ARG here in 2019 is a little different. It definitely is hinting more at the actual story and events that will likely go down in Cyberpunk 2077. So if you want a full breakdown of where we were with this ARG as of August 2019, I highly recommend that you check out my video on it, but a quick refresher, this new newest ARG began with this image, which secretly said in binary code, seems you're not among the sheep after all, wanna play a game, watch for the beeps. And this led to players uncovering a new page on this cyberpunk website titled Aramis, an anagram of samurai, which included some lore mentioning the various corporate wars that have already occurred, and a secret message from CDPR to fans thanking them for support. But also on the website was a downloadable file which eventually, through a bunch of codes being solved, would lead to another secret website site being discovered being nightcorp.net, which after uncovering the secret on this website led to a mysterious reddit account being found
found called Corp Thing. This is where we had been for the last month or two with no updates, but in early September that changed, when another mysterious account, Shazan Sil, emerged on the Game Detectives Discord server and started sharing screenshots of conversations the account had with the Reddit user, Corp Thing. The conversation reads as follows. Shazan Sil starts off by saying, So what do you think about the Corpos? This is again in a message to Corp Thing, who responds with, With power comes great responsibility. What's your favorite Corpo? The most respected, Arasaka, but my favorite, Night Corp. Can you tell me more about Night Corp? I know very little of that one. And here we have a little bit of a lengthy response coming from the Corp thing, and they say, Night Corp was the capital group established by Richard Knight in the 1990s to fund the development of his many projects, including Coronado City, later Night City. He was assassinated in 1998, probably by an organized crime family who wanted greater control over the city. In the years following his death, Night Corp declined in power and prestige, losing much of their influence in the city. However, that much capital doesn't just go away, and Night Corp has been quietly involved with numerous projects through the years, from funding some social services in Night City to Black Ops research and development programs on lunar bases. They have kept busy. One interesting thing to note is that space travel or traveling to the moon has been somewhat hinted in some of the older Cyberpunk 2077 trailers. So does that mean that Night Corp could have a significant role on the overall narrative of Cyberpunk 2077? Maybe, and that may be what's being teased right now in this ARG. But continuing forward, Shazan Sil says, So Night Corp was the founder of Night City? Richard was. Okay, did Night Corp and Richard have involvement with the other corps like Arasaka? Not that I know of, but I only know as much as they want me to know. Who are they? The management. You work for one of this corps? I work for Night Corp. Do you like working there? I do. What do you do there? can't tell you, it's top secret project. I can be killed if they will find out I'm reaching to civilians. So I received a message that led me to your account. Are you in any sort of trouble? No, not at least yet, but we are preparing a big move. We'll need new agents for this project, it's all or nothing. How many do you need? I have a few agents ready, they just need a signal. There will be tests. Some were already tested and failed. Some found the clues and are on the list. It's all I can tell you for now. There is one person that wants Night Corp to fail. Have you heard about Sandra? Yes, I know what happened to her, but nothing more after Trauma Team took her. Was she with Night Corp? She escaped the hospital. We need to find her before she finds us. Gotta go talk to you later. So recognize the mention of Sandra towards the end of that conversation. That's actually a character we've already been introduced to in the first gameplay demo. The woman that V and Jackie have to rescue and bring to the heavily armed trauma team, which take her to the hospital, as mentioned in the conversation. Her full name is Sandra Dorset, and an account Sandra D soon after emerged on the Game Detectives Discord server and started communicating or, well, confronting the Shazan Sil account. This is the conversation that they had, and again, it's it's a little lengthy. Sandra Dorset set on September 9th on this Discord server responds about the previous conversation, starting off saying, Hello, Shazan Sil, you are a naughty man faking DMs of a corpo agent is really a brave move. Shazan Sil gives a question mark response, You know what I'm talking about. I didn't fake anything. I posted links that somebody posted before me, asking WTF was that. I even said who posted it. And then Sandra D brings up a conversation that apparently Corpo thing had. Uh, Jakazi sent him this message saying, hey, I heard you're trying to solve the ARG. What clues have you found so far? Quite a few. Well, what ones do you have right now? You might be further along than we are. Maybe. Hey, Chumba, if you've got something, I want to hear it any little bit helps. And this is Sandra D admitting that I hacked Corp Thing's account. I am Sandra. And Sandra saying that you play a very dangerous game with Night Corp, Shazan Sil. And the response that she gets is, The print was not mine, but if you really are Sandra, yes, I am playing a dangerous game. I'm finding you. Sandra D next says, Good luck with that. There is an army of Netrunners that you'd have to fight first. If I were you, I would not trust Night Corp and get fried in whatever they do. Who told you I trust anyone? Me trusting a Corpo? Are you nuts? Good. Gonna take my own conclusions when I find you. I need to run before I'll have Netwatch on my butt again. And then it seems like another user just pops up randomly saying, I still doubt that this is related to the ARG. Some people really were stunned. They didn't know what was happening on this Discord server. And then Sandra D actually responded to this user saying, I like how you doubt my existence, even though you helped me escape the hospital. But it's okay. You won't meet the requirements to fight with the corporation. Shazan Sil says, Sandra, we need proof. 
and right now you gave nothing. Sandra D asks, what do you want? Anything that proves you just not a fake. If you really have skilled netrunners, hack corp thing's account. And then here we have Sandra D saying, corp thing found a key sheet and he holds it for himself. Once he cracks the next step, which happens this week, he will give it to you. It will be too late though, you'll mark my words. Look for numbers and letters in empty cells. Empty cells are the key you'll see. So here she being Sandra claims to have hacked Corp Thing's account and reveals that Corp Thing has found a key sheet that he will crack soon and then give it to Shazan Sill. Now following this conversation with Sandra, Shazan Sill would then contact Corp Thing and this is the conversation that they have. Shazan Sill says Sandra supposedly contacted me. It could be fake. I don't know. Corp Thing responds saying she sent several messages to my potential recruits. She got access to something important and screwed it up. Okay, I need more information. Can you give me anything? I found a sheet in archives, full of letters and numbers. Every day for the last three weeks, I copy at least one row. I can't copy it via PC, because if I do, other agents will know. Not sure what it is for, but I got a few guys helping me to crack it. Must be important if she wants it, or I don't know. She's on still says, she said in one week you'll have the key, but it will be too late. I need to find out what it is for. We have a script that links the numbers and letters, but without the full sheet, it is useless. No idea why it would be too late. Let me guess, you can't send me what you have right now, right? This script is looking for empty cells too? Corp Thing says, not yet. No, I will though once I'm done with copying. No, there are no empty cells. She left me a note, by the way. Please don't share it. 27. Any idea what it means? And Shazan still follows up saying, nothing comes to mind. Let me know if you have any idea. Might be a key. To what? Or maybe a day? That too. The note was just that, nothing else, and why should I not share it? Note was just that, 27. I'm looking something up. And she sent some messages saying, do not trust him, Sandra Dorset. I need to figure out that 27. Do you have someone you trust? Yes, the only 27 I could find was when we first saw Night City. And when I first saw Sandra. Found a few others, if it really was date, but I think we will know on the next 27. So this conversation carries on. It seems like they're just trying to figure it out, try to decode what this 27 is. But since then, we have found out what this 27 actually is. Now, most of these messages were posted on September 9th, which is actually International Sudoku Day, which the official Cyberpunk 2077 Twitter account, you know, celebrated with 27 puzzles. So there you have it. Of course, anyone following this ARG knew there was a hidden message in these puzzles, and of course there was. The assumption many had based on the wording of the conversations we just went over was that this was another grill cipher and it turned out to be just that. As Corp Thing stated in just around a week, he had a key sheet which was posted onto the official Cyberpunk 2077 subreddit September 19th. The post was titled Found This and the secret message uncovered was the following. V. Digital Ghost Look Out. Blackwall is real. Alt Cunningham. Run away. They are watching you on Wednesday. Soul Killer. Netwatch. Arasaka. Corp Thing is the enemy. Are you? Netrunner Gary. So who this Netrunner Gary is and what's coming on one of these Wednesdays is still unknown. But the black wall that's mentioned is a virtual wall that is said to keep AIs from breaking through into the rest of the virtual world and wreaking havoc. Netwatch is in charge of making sure the black wall is protected and does not go down. However, gangs like the Voodoo Boys wish to tear down the black wall and free the AIs because they believe the AIs can help or even save humanity. This was briefly teased in the recent gameplay demo in which Bridget, the leader of the Voodoo Boys gang, takes V through the net and shows I believe the black wall and this actually was overlooked. It was something that I think was intentionally put there secretively, but for one single frame, I believe, there is a really interesting scene teased. They appear to be right up against the wall and Bridget says she will be the first, which does that mean V crossing to the other side, or maybe, and more likely, that is referencing Alt Cunningham and her crossing to this side, which would make sense, especially since Johnny Silverhand is on a quest to find his long-lost girlfriend who invented the beta version of Soul Killer, a program that would make a digital emulation or a copy of a Netrunner's mind. Alt is considered one of the most brilliant netrunners, and Johnny, the digital ghost, as referenced in that secret message, is trying to find Alt with the help of our main character V. Now since the Sudoku puzzle's true secret message was uncovered, the Sandra D and Shazan Sil Discord accounts have still been active and giving more hints to what's ahead. On the same day Corp Thing revealed the key sheet, Sandra D stated, remember, you are free. There's always a choice, I'm in hiding now. There will be a time you'll have to pick a side, and there 
there won't be coming back. Night Corp is looking for people like me, for their secret project. They look for smart ones and brave. And then revealing to Shansan Sil, who asked, why should I be on your side? Sandra responds saying that I worked there. You don't want to be on their side unless you want to be fried, but that is your choice. I can't access their files without being spotted by Netwatch, and I want to live. There will be my time. Right now, I need to remove Corp thing. Free alt, or at least get close to her. Within the next weeks, I will drop clues and hints. Keep them, use them, outsmart Corpos. You will know it's from me. I've got to run. Speak soon. Honestly, I'm just really fascinated and kind of intrigued by how committed CDPR is to this ARG. So much work seems to have gone into this, and what's clear is they're getting more, giving more insight into what is likely the main narrative of Cyberpunk 2077 and the big decisions that our character V will face. Not really sure what this is leading to or what it will end up being, but thus far I think we've learned some really interesting new information on this game that's about seven months away. But what do you guys make of all of this, and do you have any predictions on what events may occur in Cyberpunk 2077? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, but thank you for watching, make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video, or found any informative value, and make sure to follow my other social media accounts for updates on new videos, links are always down in the description below. I'm most active on Twitter, giving opinions on news that I do not always get into video form, so do make sure to follow me over there. Also check out my Discord for all sorts of discussion on games like Cyberpunk 2077. And again, thank you for joining. Consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I'll see you later.